fill with big landing strips of concrete. We have three crews here, one to conduct the tests, one to check the cameras and equipment. As you can see, we have to be able to shoot from high angles once in a while. One to check every car to make sure it's at peak performance. Engines, brakes, tires, everything. sending the cars out to see which ones have the quickest acceleration when you need it. And all of a sudden you find you have less time to pass than you thought you had. I call this the GI Wonder Test. The GI Wonder Test? Mm-hmm. Did you ever pass a string of slow-moving cars and about halfway around find another car coming right at you? Mm, I'll say. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but when it happens to me, I say, gee, I wonder if I'm going to make it. Oh, I see. The GI wonder test. <laughs> That's pretty good. Actually, it's the passing ability test. This is where we find out what that extra horsepower is really for. If it's properly engineered. We start with Windsor and Mercury. The cars cross the line at 25 miles an hour. There, the drivers floor the accelerators. At 500 feet, the Windsor's two and a half lengths ahead. The Windsor and the Olds 88 said to have the fastest pickup on the Oldsmobile line. At 500 feet, the Windsor's in front by three to four car lengths. The Windsor versus the Buick Super. We're using two cameras, one at the starting line and one at the 500 foot mark. Again, it's Windsor by three lengths. This is the New Yorker compared with the Buick Roadmaster. In a short burst of speed to pass, the New Yorker gains four to five lengths on the Buick. The Imperial and the Cadillac, both in drive range. Both floor to get all the quick power possible. In 500 feet, the Imperial beats the Caddy by six or seven lengths. The Imperial and the Lincoln. These are all one continuous run, cutting from one camera to the other. Price of the car show more get-up-and-go power than their competition. Well, was that of, should I say, passing interest? Well, I see what you mean about needing quick power for emergency passing. There's another emergency we test for. Over here. And this is the panic stop test. We're lining up the Windsor and the old 88 and the Buick Super. They'll cross the starting line at exactly 60 miles an hour. If they're all even, Dusty will give them the signal to slam on the brakes. Because we have set up that imitation tractor and hay wagon on the track, and the object is to stop before they hit the wagon. Wow. Well, in just a moment, we'll see how wow it is, because here they come. The Windsor, Olds, and Buick Super approach at 60 miles an hour. The wagons are at the rated safe stopping distance at 60. The Olds goes right through one wagon while the Buick plows into another. The Windsor stops well back. The Windsor and the Mercury. The Chrysler cars not only have more power, they have better control of it. Again, the Windsor stops short, but the Mercury nudges the wagon. Now the Imperial with Lincoln and Cadillac, same speed. Hit the brakes. The Imperial comes to a safe straight line stop. The others can't stop in time. <laughs> now the third driver looks as though he might have a lawsuit in his hands, to say the least. Not to mention a few teeth missing. Now the Chrysler car seem to be the best, whether it's go power or stop power. You ever see a test of turn power? Oh, not that I know of. Come on. We set up these flies exactly 60 feet apart. Our cars are going to weave through them at 35 miles an hour. There goes the Windsor, as graceful and nimble and sure-footed as a cat. The Oldsmobile. At the third flag, the Olds rear end breaks loose and slides off the road. He misses the fourth flag and slides off again. Out of control. Buick 
super. Same driver, same speed. Uh-oh, same rear end breakaway, same loss of control. Now the Mercury. It leans heavily, it swerves. The rear wheel slide off the shoulder. <laughs> this is really a rough go. Then along comes the Saratoga. That makes it look so easy. You'd think the Chrysler cars were glued to the road. Next, the Buick Roadmaster. This Buick is equipped with airbags for springs. At extra cost. But airbags don't seem to help much on leans and spurs. It's half out of control. The Imperial is a long car. Yet it negotiates the flags cleanly. Very little lean on no breakaway of the rear end. The Cadillac in the Imperial class develops considerable lean and swerve. And the rear end fishtails. There goes another flag. The driver has only partial control. Last the Lincoln. It starts out all right, but soon it's in trouble. Every single car outside the Chrysler's either missed the turn or hit a flag. There's another difference between torsion air and ordinary suspension. Coil springs or airbags. I can see now there's more to power steering than just making it easier to park. Come on, we're going up the Mount Whitney Road and do some more tests. Why don't you ride in the Imperial? Oh, that did it. Let's go. Buick Super coasts down this 18% grade with transmissions and low gear. This determines the braking you get out of an engine without using your brakes. Brakes used too much on hills heat up and fade. The Buick with down flow transmission doesn't hold as well as the Windsor by a length and a half. Next is the Windsor and the Oldsmobile. engine braking test is pretty much a test of transmissions. Now it's the Chrysler torque flight against Oldsmobile Hydromatic. The torque flight holds better than the Hydromatic. Now it's the Windsor torque flight versus Mercury's Mercamatic. Particular quality doesn't mean much on the level, but on hilly driving it means a whale of a lot. We're going to use this sharp curve for another test. Stability and hard turns. Established safe speed around here is 25 miles an hour. Our drivers are going to take it at 50 to see how steady each car can hang in there. Here comes the Windsor, and around the corner like a West Point cadet. And now the Buick Super. The rear end breaks loose. Next, the Oldsmobile. It holds a little better, but the rear end still breaks away some. The Mercury. The driver each time makes every effort to follow the same pattern, but all cars don't react the same. Here's the New Yorker, hugging the curve as if it was on a track. No sway, no lean, no breakaway. The Buick Roadmaster. On airbags, you pay extra for. Not much difference between this car and the Buick Super, is there? Now the Imperial is glued to the road and corners as flat as a bookkeeper's chest. This is the Cadillac on coil springs. Again, the rear end breaks loose. And last, Lincoln. Why don't the Chrysler slide off the road? The answer is torsion air. 